This is Worth Godwin of WorthGodwin.com. In this lesson, I want to talk a little bit about a computer term, which is CPU, or which is short for Central Processing Unit, and is also just sometimes referred to as the processor. And a lot of people don't really understand this term, and so I'm going to use some very simple, plain English ways of explaining it that should just make a lot of sense, much more than what you've probably heard before. I'm also going to talk a little bit about why it is that over time your computer seems to be slower or what once used to be a good, really good computer now seems to be a low-end computer and why that happens and also help you exp understand a little bit more about the CPU and how you, once you understand this, you can better choose the right computer for you depending on how you use it. Okay, so first off, I have a CPU right here. This is a CPU, this little chip here. It's not really that, you know, really complicated looking necessarily. It's just kind of a square, flat square, and it has just a little thing in the center there that's got that white stuff around it that's just a, a paste that's needed. Um, but the um, right in the center, I got paste all over my fingers. Um, there is that little rectangular part. That's really, that itself, that's the CPU, essentially. The whole thing really is, but it, that, that's the, the CPU, the central part of the CPU, if you will. And then underneath there's a bunch of pins. You can kind of think they look sort of like um, a, uh, a really short, uh, in terms of how big it is, it looks like a really short uh, sewing needle or something. It's about as big around as a sewing needle but it's about, you know, a couple of millimeters long. And this thing plugs into what's called the motherboard or main logic board as they're called on Macs, uh, which is sort of like the central nervous system of the computer. And this is like the brain. So, and then on top of that, there's this thing called a heat sink, and then there's a fan. And that just keeps the, the processor cool because the more effort, the more it's working, the more effort it's putting into, the, into whatever you're doing, the more it heats up. It's much like how when we're exercising we get warm and our bodies sweat to cool off. The evaporation of our sweat cools us off. It's sort of the same idea. The more we exercise the more we tend to sweat because the more hot we've become. Okay? Uh, so this is a pretty good way of thinking about the, the CPU. It, you can think of it like not instead of thinking about it as a brain, which is a per, it's a good way of thinking about it because that is kind of the closest equivalent to a brain in a computer. It's the part that does the quote unquote thinking, not literally, but it seems like it's thinking, closest equivalent to thinking. Uh, but another way of thinking about it is to think of it like muscles. So a low end processor a computer that has a low end processor, not one of the fastest ones on the market, in other words, it is kind of like that sort of stereotypical 98 pound weakling. And uh, a high-end CPU, a high-end processor, is sort of like um, you know, a Charles Atlas or Arnold Schwarzenegger or so, you know, wh whoever a modern bodybuilder is. I don't know who, I don't really follow these things, but someone who's very, very strong, maybe takes steroids even, and uh, very big and muscular. Now, if you think about those two people, the 98 pound weakling and the steroid guy, muscle, the bodybuilder, if those two people, if either one of them is carrying, like say a book across a room and they're walking across the room with it, there's no real advantage to being a bodybuilder to carrying a book. The, bo the, the bodybuilder or the 98 pound weakling, either one of them can easily carry a book across a room. However, if instead the person's trying to carry, say, a really big bag of cement, like a 100-pound bag of cement or something, the 98-pound weakling uh, might not even be able to get across the room, might not even be able to pick it up. Um, and if they can make it across the room, they're probably going to stagger slowly across the room and barely make it across because they're trying to do something that's just too heavy, it's too big for them to do. The bodybuilder, on the other hand, probably, you know, I'm sure they're going to notice that the weight is more than a book, obviously, but they're going to be able to carry it across the room much more easily than, than the, you know, the 98-pound weekly, if you'll excuse the term. Um, and um, so 
that's kind of how you want to think about a high-end computer is like the bodybuilder and then your sort of average level computer is like the you know maybe not a 98 pound weakling but it's like a sort of a normal average person who's not particularly muscular um, and can but can carry, easily can carry a book across the room but it couldn't really very easily if at all carry that huge bag of cement okay so now what what what's the cement what's the book well let me give you some examples the average person most people are doing a few things with their computer they're writing using a word processor like word to write a letter they're writing an email or reading their emails they're looking at web pages maybe they're listening to some music maybe they're watching some little video like a DVD or something uh, maybe they're looking at some photographs those are really average things so you can kind of think of those as equivalent to carrying a book or something light across a room any computer can do those things these days if it's a modern computer now doing something like editing video like making a move a DVD movie that you're creating yourself with your footage that you've shot with your camcorder or um, editing making changes to a really large super high quality photograph like from a high-end professional camera as opposed to like a, a real little you know little pocket sized digital camera the higher end cameras tend to take bigger higher quality photographs and those are bigger and heavier in the computer for the computer to work with so to speak uh, another example would be playing a real high-end computer game those activities those are more like carrying that big bag of cement and so they do need a high-end computer now so basically you want to ask yourself when you're buying a computer what kind of things am I doing am I doing the typical everyday things like checking email web browsing and that sort of thing well then if that's what if your answer to that is yes and that's all you're really doing your sort of average everyday computer is just going to be just fine on the other hand if you're going to be doing a lot of video editing or a lot of work with large photographs and things like that not just occasional work but a lot of work then you definitely want to get a real high-end computer for that reason or if you're going to be a if you're a die-hard gamer or something so uh, and I don't mean like a you know card game or something like that like solitaire I mean like a real high-end computer game where you're kind of going through a virtual world and there's lots of details around you and everything's moving very quickly and you and it's almost like walking around in the real world so um, that should give you a general guideline, a rule of thumb as to whether or not you want to get a high-end computer. And one other side thing, I would recommend do not get a super cheap computer. Now it may seem like you're saving money if you get a few hundred dollar computer, like three, four, five hundred dollars, six hundred dollar computer. Chances are, though, if you're buying it from a brand name, it it may actually be defective. And I'm not kidding about this. Other, and I'm not going to name specific names, but companies other than Apple Apple is one company that does not do this but other companies and if you're thinking of a computer company name as chances are it's probably one that does this they will actually buy and it's one particular company I'm thinking of that's one of the most popular computer companies out there it does this uh, they will actually go and buy these things these processors and they'll buy ones that they know don't work and they can buy them for cheap and then what they do is they slow them down and hope that they won't break up, break down, which obviously is not a really good uh, thing to do for their customers. So if you get a decent computer, sort of average to high end, you know, average computer, that's going to be fine for any of your everyday activities. And then your high end computer for if you're doing higher end things like I talked about. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was why is it that over time computers, what used to be a really powerful computer, now seems like the 98 pound weakling goes from being Charles Atlas to a 98 pound weakling. Well, it's because over time, the new, new versions of programs like a new version of Word or a new version of your operating system like Windows Vista compared to Windows XP or OS X Leopard compared to OS X Tiger that's 10.5 versus 10.4 these new versions tend to be more complicated not necessarily complicated to use but under the hood so to speak and you can kind of think of that as them becoming more heavy over time so the average weight has gotten greater and greater over the years so what used to be light and easy for something an older computer now is heavy and harder to do 
So I hope that makes sense. And uh, if you have any more questions, of course, if you're subscribed to my newsletter, just reply to any email, and I'd be happy to answer your question.